Gotcha! My name is Donato and I'm here to talk to you about social media influencers, content creators. It's been a bit of a debacle the past couple of weeks here in the running world with one influencer being disqualified from Yorkshire Marathon for cheating the course and the infamous, I won't mention his name because apparently that gives him free press. We know who he was, yeah, with the e-bikes at New York City Marathon for getting a lifetime ban by New York Road Runners. Yes, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below what you think has been happening but also the reason why I've done this video is for lots of reasons because whilst I know a lot of you think I'm a social media influencer, content creator, no I'm not yeah I'm definitely not in the category of those two guys anyway but some of us get tired of the same brush so I'm going to go through three main areas of this I'm going to give you a bit of a background of myself in a previous life I have first-hand experience of all this yeah actual first-hand experience not gossip hearsay or opinion real life facts so I'm going to go through that how we've got to the second part will be how we've got to where we are yeah in terms of how did it all start? Who started it all? Because it did all start around 2011, 2012. So it's been going for quite a while. It wasn't called that before, just like the word content creator wasn't called that. And then in the third stage, I'll be going through running influencers and mentioning some names possibly. And I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, and also I'll be sharing, I might do a separate video, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments below what red flags, how do you identify if you think someone's being fake or real? Yeah, because at the end of the day, whilst I produce content, I do not regard myself as a content creator. And whilst I have some influence, we all have influence of some kind, I don't regard myself, <clears throat> as I clear my throat, I don't regard myself as a social media influencer. That might sound a bit counterproductive, counterintuitive, or whatever you might say, ironic, but that's how I feel. I have a day job. What I produce here on YouTube is my hobby. And let's go into the details of what's been happening, as I say before. Yep, so without further ado, let's crack into first phase, my actual experience. So yes, my first hand experience. Back in the noughties, the early noughties, I've been working now for over four decades. For those of you who don't know me, I'm currently 63 years of age. Yep, Ooh, I know. Um, what you won't get in this video is these pans ins and outs and edits and stuff to try and keep your attention. I'm just saying it how it is, yeah? I don't have a script. Whilst I have some notes and topics that I'll be going through, I don't read from a script. You might see some influencers do read from a script, so they take time to write a script and do it all very professionally and have multiple takes until it's all perfect. That's not me, I'm actually like one of the original YouTubers. You might say a bit of a dinosaur. But basically for me, I've got over four decades of commercial experience working in a number of industries where often I'd be working on due diligence, checking out texts and stuff and working with all sorts of people. I have worked with A-list celebrities. I've worked with millionaires, multi-millionaires. I've worked on startups. I've worked with big blue chip companies, multinationals. I've done the lot, yes. I have the t-shirt, been there, got there and all that type of stuff. Been there, done that, yes. Now, during the noughties, I had various hobbies as well. And I've had hobbies, you know, all my life. We've all had hobbies. So one of my hobbies was actually writing a blog, yeah? So I had a blog, yeah, I know. What's a blog? For those of you who remember, basically it would be what podcasts are now to the internet, yeah? Internet 2.0 even we called it. Are we up to 3.0? I don't know. But yes, I've had experience where commercially working with a startup where a number of people, we would basically do due diligence and launch products. So I've had instances where we'd launch a particular product and literally within a matter of days, we'd be making about £25,000 a day. That's right, a day. Let that sink in, £25,000 a day. So when you see these videos, and there's a lot of influencers coming out now saying that there's videos of how to become a millionaire and get rich, and they're all lying, I find that quite ironic because they're doing what the others do. But 
I'm talking about my background. So I can tell when we've got a good thing going or when it's gonna be a waste of time. So I'd work on due diligence and I'd work with a lot of people. I get on with a lot of people, yeah, that's me, that's how I am. But I started this blog as a bit of a sideline, a bit of a hobby, and it grew organically. And uh, this is long before the words of social media influence, whatever, but I'd get invited to all sorts of events. I'd get all sorts of freebies sent to me. And I thought, this is great. Bearing in mind, this is my hobby. I've still got a day job doing my consultancy and all that type of stuff, traveling around the world and doing all sorts of stuff. Another thing to throw in, I've been to around 40 odd countries around the world. So I'm quite averse at working with different ethnics, ethnicities, people of all different backgrounds, yeah? So I've got plenty of experience in that, but my blog was a bit of fun. I'm not gonna share with you what that blog is because some of you will go out and maybe plagiarize, and that's the world that we live in now. So on my YouTube here, I've not used all the things that I do on a commercial basis because at the end of the day, we live in a bit of a plagiarist world now where people will just take things. People have taken some of my YouTube videos, literally copy and paste and pushed it out. I find that a bit disingenuous. So there are things that I was doing there and I was getting all sorts of invites, meeting all sorts of people. It's absolutely brilliant. I loved it. Now, some of you will be saying, oh, why didn't you do it as full time? Well, basically, there's no money in it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, unless you break into mainstream media and get a gig through that, which I've worked on on various TV shows and whatever, and you would have seen me only the other week as a guest on The Great North Run as a pacer, yeah? And maybe you'd like to know what impact did that have? I mean, a lot of you guys watching this, guys and gals, would love to be on a TV show with millions of viewers and you think you hit the big time. Well, you're in for a stark surprise because it don't happen that way. <clears throat> yes, that's the cold, hard truth. Because whilst I mentioned there are influencers, there's good influencers, bad influencers. And there was, you know, for me, that, uh, that experience I'd learned so much. I'd go to events and I found it a bit surreal. Sometimes I'd have to sort of knock on my head saying, is this real? I'd go to events and people would find out who I was and all of a sudden there'd be a queue of people all wanting to speak with me because there was all sorts of deals and things to be done and they wanted a, basically a piece of me, yeah? So I do me stuff and would just get on with it, yeah? That was my background and as I say, we've over four decades working with hundreds of people and people of all backgrounds, all countries, and as I say, millionaires, multi-millionaires, you know, I've got a good barometer of checking whether someone's good, bad or indifferent. And as I said, I may produce a video in the future of what red flags to I use to identify whether people, and it's not guaranteed 100% that whether they're, you know, doing things like what's happened in the past few weeks. I could see those guys were up to no good anyway. Uh, pretty fake, I would call it. But what red flags do you identify? If you want me to do that, then just leave a comment. Yes, please, in the comments, if you want me to produce something like that. And I'll talk you through some of the red flags and how I identify whether people are on the make because there's a great book called Get Rich or Lie Trying and it's all about the social media influencers and how they've grown and it mentions all sorts of people that uh, you know in our modern day and how they're using the system and playing the system which is what I'm going to talk about now. How did it all start? Yes, how did it all start? Back in 2011, or think before that, right, if I said the name, well, before I say the name, let me tell you what this person's job was when they were a student. They were delivering pizzas. So this person was a pizza delivery boy, yeah? If I said the name Ben Francis, does that ring any bells for you? Ben Francis? No? No? Name doesn't ring a bell? As I say, Ben Francis used to be a pizza delivery boy. I think it was Domino's. Domino, hoo hoo. I can't remember if it's Domino's Pizzas, whoever it was, he was a pizza delivery boy for that. But the company name is now worth billions, yeah? Now he started back in 2011, a company, have you heard Gymshark? Have you heard of Gymshark? Yes, that's right. Gymshark were the pioneers of social media influencing, but even then it wasn't called that. 
Now, Ben was a big fan of bodybuilding and all that. And when Gymshark launched in 2011, it was just food supplements. It wasn't clothing, but basically he grew his business to a point and what he did, what he pioneered, in fact, when he started his business, literally just up the road from where I'm sitting right now, his head office is in Solihull, which is just up along the M42 here in the West Midlands. Amazing guy. I've not met him personally, but I have seen many of his videos and I've met people who've met him and he's a lovely chap, genuine guy. Now he started and the way he grew his business was contacting YouTube celebrities, personalities, whatever you want to call them, yeah? Now he doesn't go into detail of the whys and hows and this and all that type of stuff, but basically he bought out a space at the NEC Exhibition Centre, National Exhibition Centre in Birmingham, bodybuilder show and brought these people, they all agreed to come along and they brought their audience and it just exploded. That's where it all started, as I say, around 2011, 2012, he brought in a person. So it'd be the equivalent of, I would say, like your Casey Neistat. Have you heard of Casey Neistat? Millions of followers. So these guys in the bodybuilding world had massive influence. He brought them all along, they brought the audience and it all exploded. So when in business, when people see, well, that formula, they want to replicate that formula, they started it. So that's where it all started, Gymshark. If anyone tells you otherwise, they're talking a load of <clears throat> cuckoo, yeah? So they're the ones who started, brilliant. And from that, it spun off into all sorts of agencies and you'll see some other influencers of influencers who've set up agencies, marketing agencies and types where they bring in influencers and they've made their millions off influencers and all that type of stuff, which I'm gonna talk about now. The running influencers, where are we at? What's going on? Running influencers, how did we get to where we are now? When I started my YouTube channel and how it's run now, it's pretty much the same. I've done a lot of this talking heads, I haven't really changed much, but I was basically pioneering the running with the GoPro and doing the commentary as we go along. Yes, there were other YouTube channels, but they were not doing what I was doing. So I was unique in that way, but I was doing it as a diary, yeah? And growing it in an organic way. Because at the end of the day, it was a hobby. It is a hobby. I still have a day job. It was a day job then. And this was just a fun, a bit of outlet. There was a bit of safety involved as well. And the reasons, and I'll do it, it's, incidental as to why I started doing the videos in the training, but it was just me running with my little GoPro, yeah? Nothing, obviously it's a, it's a big GoPro now. I might show you the my film crew that I was with when I'd done New York City Marathon back in 2017, but I'll leave that for another day. Running influencers, it's nothing new. There are now some really big channels out there, and as in that book, Get Rich or Lie Trying, some of them, are not being very genuine and some are being pretty disingenuine, so disingenuine that you know that I don't do YouTube shoe reviews, yeah, or shoe tubers, I think as they're called. Um, but you would have seen Stephen Ganoza, the serious runner, does an amazing parody of a lot of stuff that's going on there. But I actually done a, a survey a few weeks ago, in fact, it'd probably be a month ago, about shoe reviews. And uh, did you see the statistics from that? So I asked, um, in terms of do we trust these uh, reviews on YouTube? So do you think shoe reviews on YouTube are, first answer was unbiased and honest, biased, whether paid or unpaid, uh, I don't watch shoe reviews and other. Would you believe only 21% answered that it's unbiased and honest? Now, 45% said it's biased, whether they're paid or unpaid, but a massive 32% of you don't even watch YouTube reviews. I don't, so whilst I produce YouTube videos, I don't watch shoe reviews. In fact, I hardly watch any YouTube at all. So I found that quite insightful and some of the comments on there were quite uh, eye-opening. But the world that we live in now, I mean, there, there is all sorts out there. I think some of them are doing an amazing, genuine job. When you look at Matt at Sweat Elite, he's been on my podcast, absolutely amazing guy. And well done, Matt, on your two, was it a 218 at uh, your latest marathon? I think he finally broke 220 at Chicago, around a 219. Absolutely amazing. Stephen Scullion, 
ex-Olympian trying to get into the Olympics. Again, a very open and honest type of guy doing wonderful content. So those guys, they do identify themselves as content creators and they're producing great content. I do recall when the word came about back in, I was working on a blog project and one journalist says, oh, I'm going on a content creation course. This is in 2009, 2010. And when I asked the person to explain what it is, I said, so it's blogging then. Yeah, at the time, so it's just a new word. For some people, you know, if I make, if I take a picture and put it on social media, that's creating content. If I take a video, the video you're looking at is content creation, but it's a completely different ball game when you're doing it professionally. So there's a lot of people I say who are doing it very genuinely. And then there's a lot on there, and I'm not saying whether these are good, bad, or indifferent, but I'd love to hear from you what your thoughts are on some of these channels, because there is an awful lot out there. Some have grown to amazing numbers and they do target new people all the time. And I can talk about the marketing and strategies that they do to try and grow it. So when you're looking at people like, I've met Ben Parks, great lad, but you've got Ben Parks, Ben is running, Matt Reese, Andy Rayner, Chris Ford, Aubrey Runs, Jog On with Harry Morgan, Nick Bester, Mike Coe, Seth James Tamore. By the way, what's happened to Seth? I, I haven't seen anything of that on there. Casey Neistat, who's in the millions. Um, James Dunn, who does more of the physio type stuff. But again, Ben and Mary with Messi Happy. Mark Lewis with his cardio dolphin. So we talk about people, <laughs> yes, and this is no bad mark on Mark Lewis, but cardio dolphin, Jim Shark. Yeah, okay, so uh, you draw your own conclusions from that, yeah. So a lot of people now focus on telling the stories and some of them tell some great stories, yeah. I'm not much of a storyteller, I'm just saying it how is. I'm more about facts, figures and how it works and what's really going on rather than the story and the yarns that are being spun. I could spin many a yarn, I mean, and, and I don't overshare on content. That's why I don't regard myself as a social media influencer or content producer. There's people who put up content on Instagram. This is pictures and massive descriptions and how motivational and inspirational are. Every day, multiple times a day for years and years and years and years. And um, yeah, I could go into and do a, a sort of conclusion debate and all that type of stuff. But there is one thing, and I always say I'll save the best till last, where I think, you know, what's happening now, it's reached a level of saturation. And we only have to see, and whilst I try and stay away from politics, politics is often a good indicator of what's happening and how things are going on. So when we looked at the presidential election, you looked at the celebrities who were endorsing Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, and the things that they were saying or doing, I think the Cardi B interview, I don't know if you ever saw that, absolute shambles you know she lost her auto cue which is my whole thing about are people fake or real now i'm not saying that everybody who reads from a script is fake yeah i'm not saying that but what i am saying is sometimes what people are reading from a script might not be themselves they might be putting on a mask and putting on a persona and being someone completely different not themselves yeah so they're endorsed it was an absolute mess now some of you may follow a podcast I called The Diary of a CEO, Stephen Bartlett. He's a dragon in Dragon's Den. I think in the States you have a program called Shark Tank. So you have a, a group of investors and people are pitching their business ideas and looking for investors. Now I've got a little clip here where Stephen Bartlett, and this is where I think things are going, which makes it a bit disingenuous, but that's how some business people do things. Now, Again, I'm not saying it's right or wrong or whatever, but I often hear these lines and you hear it on the Apprentice TV show where people will say, I'm not here to make friends, I'm here to do business. But any top businessman will tell you, and I've worked with many of them, that's why they've become multi-millionaires, is they're good with people. They're good with people. So if you're pissing off people, hmm, what are you actually doing? Now, here's a little clip from Stephen Bartlett where they adopt the let's piss people off strategy. Jane Warren said this on my podcast. She said, if you want to build a really, really great brand, you have to piss off 80% of people to get to your 20%. She goes, you don't need everyone to like you. That's not a brand. That's a so as you can see from that clip, yeah, he's pretty open and transparent. If you want to build a cult, yeah, 
a brand, he calls it, not a product, a cult, a brand. You have to piss 80% of the people off to get to the 20%. I think some of the celebrities and media personalities have been doing that for decades. Yeah, now it's open and transparent for you to see. Yeah, personally, I don't adopt that method. I'm, I'm always going to piss people off anyway, so I'm not going out of my way to piss people off. It's just some people don't like me for whatever reason. Yeah, I've got a whole band of trolls out there who just like to have a go at me, whether I'm on TV or not. They're just doing it for whatever reason. I'm not going to talk about the psychology of why they do that. But from Stephen Bartlett and his businesses and people who do that, there are some who consciously go out of their way to piss people off because they know that from that it will draw in 20% who will cling on and that will be their brand or cult, yeah? But we all know what cults are all about, yeah? Let's allow free thinking, yeah? Because for me, it's all about free critical thinking and for you to make your own choice and decisions of what's going on. And that was what the whole purpose of this video is and hopefully you've got some nuggets of information that help you highlight on that. Absolutely, Matt Choi should have been disqualified. I totally agree with that. And the guy who cut the course, 1000% disqualified. I think basically he should have his coaching license removed as well, but that's, you might, it might sound a bit harsh, but the guy, coach, had his own running club, mentor, saying all these right things. And there's some on YouTube who do exactly the same. Yeah, I'm not going to name and shame them. But, you know, and again, is it 100% right that they're doing that? They'll say, oh, I'm here for business. Great. I've got no problems with you running a business, but do it in an open and honest way rather than subterfuge and lying. As I say from that book, you know, get rich or lie trying. Yeah, I don't like liars. Nobody likes a liar or a cheat, do they? So for me, it's all about being open, transparent, but there are people out there who even play that game and, it's, and it is a game for them. And uh, they know they've got a limited shelf life. And for Matt Choi, you know, for those, again, to enlighten you guys, running without a shirt and the hat on backwards, for a lot of people, that's an immediate red flag. And when people say, oh, they don't know who is endorsing or sponsoring, I think he was brought over by that app, mobile app called Runner and he was running with the CEO of Runner or the founder of uh, Runner. So it's, he was there endorsing that product. And I think a lot of people have probably think, well, if he's, part, if he's the face of that product, I'm not gonna use that product. I know that they have come back with a uh, answer, almost disassociating themselves from uh, Matt Choi. But to be honest, there are so many people coming on and jumping on into the running scene because they know they have a limited life they know that they can only make their money in a particular window. And then once they've done that, and this is what I've seen time and time again, there's plenty of YouTubes where they'll then share and sell, sell their packages of how you can do it too. Yes, you too can become a millionaire and a social media influencer. What a load of horseshit. Yes, there's always that one chance that maybe someone can get through. And a number of genuine people have mentioned that is, you know, they'll play the game, they'll play the game, but they're cheating, 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 lying, cheating, lying, cheating all the time until they themselves come out and say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I uh, didn't realise I was doing this, I didn't realise I was being a bit of a dick or whatever, but uh, that's the game that they play. So some of them will constantly go out to piss people off and others will actually, uh, you know, do it in a more organic and grow it how we want because at the end of the day, I've been here now on YouTube coming up to nine years will be February, nine years, yeah, where it was all a bit of a dust bowl. And I might produce a video later on of why I came here on YouTube and devoted my time here, why I got off um, Instagram, because I really did get turned off, you know. There's some people on there where I think, really, no, there's some really good people, and I keep in touch with some really good people, but unfortunately it's been overrun by lots of Matt Choi lookalikes, yeah. And I don't mean they physically look like him, but they're doing what he does, same sort of thing, which I don't like, and I'm sure you don't like either. Anyway, that's me concluded. I hope you've enjoyed this video in some way. Please do share with all your friends and family. And as I say, if you, there's a lot in there, you might wanna rewind it and watch it all the way through. Take notes, you know, I do have notes here um, from 
the particular points that I've been going through and hopefully you found it insightful. If you have any questions that you want to ask or me to elaborate, um, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And as I say, wherever you are, whatever you do, let's just keep it open and honest. And uh, yeah, play the game if you want, but we'll catch you out. And you can be as fake as you want to be. We'll catch you out, just like Matt Choi. You know, I called him out many years ago and thought, this guy's up to no good. And uh, yet yeah, he's proven his true colours. But again, you know, that's uh, the world we live in. I'd love to meet him one day. I'm sure he's a lovely chap. All people are good people. Yeah, it's just some people, their actions and what they do is not good. Take care. Love you all. Bye, 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 bye.